Habari Southern Africa, Habari East Africa, Habari North Africa, Habari West Africa, Habari Zako Diaspora Africa, Habari Enu African Americans, Habari Aborigines in Australia, Habari Zenu Africa in the Pacific, Jamaica, Bahamas, Trinidad and Tobago, Cuba. Solomon Islands, Abarianu, Abariako, Abarizano. This is a topic that we always share in this era of utopian philosophy. We share this each and every Saturday so that Africans should reclaim their lost dignity. Africa must reclaim their lost identity. Africa must get back what is right for ours. And we cannot do that if we do not know our history. We cannot do that if we don't know what we stand for. We cannot know if we cannot scrutinize, try to investigate more and assess why we are Africans. Because of that, we always come and share ideas about this continent. Our topic today is Africa has wrong the global perception that we are primitive, that we are backwards, that we are subhumans or second class citizens. Why we say this? It's because we have received a lot of threats, we have received a lot of fights, we have received a lot of war, we have been attacked left and right but Africa still remains and exists. We are coming from the history of slave trade, whereby we were traded like cargo, we were traded like meat, we were traded like farm inputs, agriculture products, but we existed. Then we were taken colonization, we were under colonialism, we still survive. Then we were scrambled. We were scrambled, partitioned, shared like a piece of cake, so that we can we can disappear from being known Africans. As I speak to you today, Africa in the global map is known by what was parti what partitioned us and what colonized us. We are known as Anglo Africans, Luso Africans. Afro-Africans just because we were partitioned by people from the English, from the Portuguese, from the French, from the Spanish, from the Arabic, Arabic world. But our identity has not disappeared, we are still known as Africans. And that's what is great. And that must tell us that it will never happen, that this continent will extinct will disappear or will be hidden or will be destroyed by any other forces that, is, that, that has been there, that is coming or that is there. Never Africa will still exist. By this, fellow Africans, we need to stand up. Stand up and re-identify ourselves. Claim our true identity. Claim our originality and know that the world will never be without Africa. By that, we always come here and share a system, share a, an ideology, share a lifestyle that we call utopian philosophy. This is the philosophy that has come to swallow all other philosophies. Because there have been philosophies of democracy, philosophies of capitalism, philosophies of monarchism, philosophies of aristocracy, philosophies of many. But I tell you again that time has come for Africa to reclaim its glory and introduce the system that will be copied by everybody in the world. And it's none other than utopian philosophy. What is utopian philosophy? Utopian philosophy is a true philosophy, the origin of philosophy. I was having a friend yesterday, a white guy. 
He said, I don't understand you. Every time you write your name, you put the word utopia at the end. What does it mean? Because this word, the way I understand it, is a word for peace. I said, yeah, it's true. Africa are peaceful people. Africa is a home of peace. But it's not only that. Africa is a home of humanity. That is why it is known that Africa is cradle of mankind. In this way, Today we have come to give witness that this race of Africa will always be there. It is here and it will continue existing. Nobody and no one will ever erase or do anything that they can to destroy. Because slave trade has failed. Colonization has failed. And if there are other evils that are coming up, plague use, they have failed. And our topic is the subject matter of what is happening in Africa today. I want to say, start by this. I want to speak to African Union, Southern African Development Community, East African Development Community, Eastern uh, ECOWAS, Economic Community of South, uh, of West African States, and Africans in the diaspora, that from now on we must stage a campaign Africans should stage a campaign which says no lies, no deception, that everything and everyone in Africa is second class or subhuman. That should be the campaign all over the globe, that the lies that have been told, the lies that have been said, the deception that have been given, the, the distortion that were given are all wrong. The truth is... Africa is the cradle of mankind. Africa is the cream of the creation of nature itself. Being black should not be a stigma. Being black cannot be a block. Being black cannot be a shame. Because in every undertaking, in every creation, there is a black color that makes, that spices the creation as we know it. Africa has a history that has been hidden or destroyed. And you, many of you have known about the Timbuktu. Some people say Timbuktu, but we say Timbuktu. That history in Timbuktu, many people want to destroy it, want to hide it, don't want it to exist. But that history is there. It will never be erased. You can burn the library of Timbuktu. You can burn the books of Timbuktu. You can give us whatever education you want. But African history will never be erased or destroyed. Africa remains the cradle of mankind. And the world agrees today. It was a history that was denied. Because we knew that the beginning of life is coming from, uh, they are saying, Homo sapiens, Homo habilis, uh, Neanderthal. That is not true. The truth is, the beginning of life started in Africa. That's why we are called Cradle of Mankind. Therefore, the lies have been told, the smear campaign has been done about and against Africa. Africa has remained and will always remain. The truth is, Africa is here. It will be there and we will exist. There was talk in the Western media, the think tanks, philanthropic and organizations, as well as some other governments. They said COVID-19 is going to devastate Africa whereby instead of cars moving in the streets of Africa, it will be littering of dead bodies from the COVID-19 pandemic. That was the report. And you know what? Five months ago, when this report came out, and governments and institutions, international community, they were busy running around gathering farms, giving Africa. Today I will say, you waste your money. Because all the billions that you gave to Africa did not do anything. The pandemic has gone because the creation of 
nature for Africans is not in the hands of any human being. It's in the hands of nature's power itself, the God. Because there's no medicine that has come to Africa, and we cannot lie here to say masks and ventilators have helped to erase the pandemic. No. But there is a power of the DNA in the continent of Africa that is more stronger than any other plaque. I will bring history for us to know. Many people said the rest of Africa won't exist and will not survive with COVID-19. Unfortunately, today as I speak to you, not more than 300,000 Africans have died from this COVID-19. And we are a continent of 1,3 billion souls. I will say this because sometimes the Western education blindfold us, cuts our brains to think, because we believe in what we learn from school, we forget the reality on the ground. That is why utopian philosophy is here, to bring the originality of life, to bring the origins of life and the truth, and that's utopian. Other than that, there's no any other truth. Other what we learn are ideologies, something that somebody think about and they're not true. But utopian philosophy teaches the originality. I have a history here that explains that Africa will never be erased by any other chemical weapon, by any other medi medicines, by any other drug or any hatred from whosoever powerful person or government or uh, uh, institution. Never. Because history tells us. We can go to the Bible. It is Africa that made Abraham or Ibrahim a richest man. It was Africa. 